While dwarf-like in stature, no one would mistake it for a mortal dwarf. Its skin glows orange and red like metal pulled from the forge, and its hair looks like tangled strands of molten hot wire. The head of its body causes ripples in the air, and the warhammer it holds glows with borrowed fire. This is the Asser an elemental monster native to the plane of fire. Known in the multiverse as one of the most adept crafters, they are often called by magic to perform miraculous feats of engineering and smithing. But before we go into it, let's first talk about our sponsor today. This video is brought to you by Grim Hollow, the campaign guide. If you're looking to play or DM in a dark campaign setting, then this is the book for you. As you can imagine, of course, as a setting book, it has this detailed world with kingdoms and free cities, locations, factions. The whole map, as you can see it here, it's all very well described so that you can get in there and experience the dark world of Etheris. Now, this is the type of world where you will have to deal with werewolves and vampires, ghosts and specters, inquisitors, you know, burning witches in towns. A lot of people like that vibe and this book brings it to you. As you all know, playing in a dark, grim campaign is really all about atmosphere, and the art from this book really sells the setting. It's some of the most evocative art that I have seen in a setting book in a while. However, the most important thing that this book provides that I think is really is its strength is its ability to actually help you play the setting better. So even if you already have your own dark world, this book can really help you bring that vibe to life. They have a whole chapter dedicated to running a dark fantasy campaign where they teach you how to bring that that vibe into the table. They have cursed monsters, they have guides on how to build legendary dark monsters, they have three adventures in the book that are set around dark fables with great art for you to use, they have dark flavored feats, they have five pages, five pages dedicated to awesome special curses. They also have character transformations into monsters, I mean they literally have it all. Even if you are already running Barovia or any other dark setting, I would honestly recommend checking out this book and adding all of these features to make it just run better. If you're not using Grim Hollow's curse Curses or transformations, you're honestly doing a disservice to the genre. Grim Hollow, the campaign guide. Go ahead and check out the store. The link is in the description below. So we have spent the last couple of episodes talking about everything in the elemental plane of fire, including the Ifriti and the City of Brass. It felt good to me to be a little thorough, so I wanted to also cover the bit of info that we do have on the Aster, even if it's not that much. So first, let's go over to the 5th edition Monster Manual and see what they tell us exactly. Here we get a decent summary of what they're all about. They tell us that they are native to the plane of fire, they're master crafters, expert miners, and sworn foes of the Ifrit. We're told later that the the reason they hate the Ifrit so much is because apparently they helped in the construction of the City of Brass, however, once construction was finished, the Ifriti attempted to enslave the race and a war between the two broke out. In any case, it says here too that beneath its metallic looking skin, the Aser is a being of fire which outwardly manifests in his fiery hair and beard. So it is not a true dwarvish creature, but an elemental. And this is explained also down here where we're told that they do not reproduce, instead they are constructed and molded from bronze and then imbued with life via a portion of the crafter's inner flame. This means that Aser are rare since they cannot freely and fully reproduce like any other race. Here it says that they live in the border between the elemental plane of earth and fire, a range of mountains and volcanoes whose spires rise as a series of fortresses. Under those mountains they extract metal and gems from the earth. This is further explained down here where they say that they are masters at working metals and gems and they rate these valuables above all else, sometimes dispatching parties across the plains to seek out rare metals and gemstones. Then, as the last piece of lore, we're told that they do not require neither food, drink, nor sleep. The stat block is here and we can see that their natural armor is quite strong. Without the shield, they would have a natural resting armor class of 15, which is pretty great. And they are physically strong, intelligent, and wise. Since they have no actual living body inside of their skin, they are immune to poison. Remember that inside, they're all elemental, so that makes sense. Both their body and weapons produce fire, so they can hurt you if you interact with them, but that's really just about it for the stat block. It's quite short. And this is probably just meant to signify how an average normal warrior asser would look like, but yeah, keep in mind that many of these elemental creatures are natural sorcerers as well, since, well, they are literally elementals. So some of the more powerful Azers would easily have a plethora of magical fire spells at their command, not that they would be any useful in the elemental plane of fire, but hey, in any other place, perhaps. Anyways, that's what 5th edition tells us, so now let's go ahead and talk about what the Monster Manual did not tell you 
about the Assers. By far, the biggest thing to talk about when relating to the Assers is this spark of flame that gives them life, because it is also a weakness that can bring them death. See, creatures like the Ifriti don't necessarily need to live in the fires of the elemental plane. They love it, of course, and they do appreciate the heat, which is why you predominantly see Ifriti in deserts whenever they show up on the Prime, but they could very well exist anywhere else within the Prime without any negative effects. Assers are not like that at all. If anything, they are actually more like fire elementals. If a fire elemental loses its fire, well, it dies. A fire elemental is its fire, and such is the case as well for the Assers. It has not been described to us whether or not the plume of flame that comes out of an Assers head and beard is a showcase of its health, but we are told that cold affects an Asser much more than other types of creatures in the elemental plane of fire, to the point that if exposed to the cold for too long, an Asser will actually die. In fact, First Edition was actually fairly specific about this too, saying, quote, Asser cannot survive in temperatures below 200 degrees Fahrenheit for more than an hour or so, end quote. This is why Asser make their towers and cities on the plane of fire, because they have no other choice. So that's why when the Fifth Edition Monster Manual says that Asser live on the border between the plane of fire and Earth, I, I must step in a bit and explain how that's possible or how that works. See, most of the empire of the Asser is actually on the side of the elemental plane of fire but they live in what we call elemental pockets of Earth. Every single inner elemental plane has elemental pockets of other planes in them. That's because the planes that border them sometimes spew out these elemental pockets into the realm. Now, depending on the plane and the size, these pockets can last from mere seconds to entire years. On the elemental plane of fire, an elemental pocket of air would show up as, say, a big fire hurricane, or perhaps big fire spouts of sorts. An elemental pocket of earth, on the other hand, on the elemental plane of fire, would show up as a big hunk of mineral that might float on the river of flame. These hunks of earth and minerals are great for the Asser, since they can mine them from the comforts of the hot elemental plane of fire. And this is why they try to settle near the border of the two planes, but more so than that, they look for active elemental vortices of earth, which are portals to the elemental plane of earth, and then they settle by them. These earth elemental portals change the land around them, turning them more earth-like, which then allows the Asser to work it and design it to their will. A great example of this is the grandest citadel of the Asser called the Crucible. This tower rests on an island of obsidian ringed by a vast sea of molten bubbling platinum. This sea of molten platinum is believed to be a portal to the elemental plane of Earth. From their own innate mastery at crafting and with the power of the elemental plane of Earth, the Assers are then able to grow their famous mineral plants, which are uh, literally trees that grow minerals. And they are able to grow entire mineral forests of this stuff. Now, communities of Assers are quite small, as the 5th edition Monster Manual said, and they just simply reproduce way too slow, but what the Monster Manual did not tell you is that to compound on this, the way that they run their society also does not quite allow for big sprawling cities. Assers are part of an extremely regimented society where every single individual has his or her place. They focus hard on practical and necessary activities for each Asser to do for the whole community, and nothing more than that. They are separated into groups that each do a different thing, and then they spend their entire life just focused on that thing for the good of the community. The law always takes precedence over individual freedoms and even the individual's life. See, this happens because Assers simply lack compassion, even amongst themselves, but further, they are taciturn, which means they simply do not speak much or evoke many feelings in life. So an unhappy Asser would just simply never say so or even show it. The only emotion that an Asser really shows heartily in life is greed, which they exclusively show only for precious metals and gems. That is the only way to move the Asser's cold, hot, heart. I should also mention that out of all of the different types of gems and minerals, the ones that they like the most for some reason are purple or red gems. They will always show preference over those. Now, trading with Assers is difficult because of their lack of compassion and their inability to truly express themselves other than just being grumpy. They are neither good nor evil, so they don't really side one way or another. However, if you manage to make a deal with an Asser, know that their word is a solid bond. Extremely law-abiding creatures, they will never break their word on anything, which makes dealing with them actually the safest out of all of the creatures in the elemental plane of fire. In essence, 
they will not trick you and they are good businessmen. Now, outside of this, we don't really know much about them. There really isn't a lot of lore on the Assers. The rumor that the city of Brass was designed partly by Assers really is just a rumor. The lore very specifically mentions that Assers refuse to talk about that rumor and the Efriti fervently deny it. The lore about the city of Brass also did not mention anything about this, we just did a whole video on it too. The only thing that it said was that slaves were the crucial catalyst into making the city of Brass float, because it required shaping the big hemisphere of Brass where the city is on top of. So it is possible that Assers were slaves by then and then help them do that, but the lore does not actually mention them specifically. We are however told that the reason the Assers consider the Ifriti their main nemesis is because the Ifriti are constantly expanding, taking over Asser lands and then turning those Assers into slaves. That's why they fight them, again, nothing to do with the city of Brass itself. Now the last thing I'm gonna touch on has to do with the creation slash beginnings of the Asser race, which of course is shrouded in mystery. See, none of the lore we have in 1st, 2nd, or even 3rd edition speaks much of the Assers, certainly not about their history. It's one of those creatures that we just do not have a lot of. However, this is one of those things where 4th edition can elucidate some of this for us. However, as always, keep in mind that 4th edition lore is very spotty at best, and 90% of the time, it contradicts previously established lore, so I don't tend to cover it on this channel. However, we got nothing else <laughs> for the Assers beginnings, so I'll make an exception here. 4th edition claims that Assers used to be straight up dwarves millennia ago. Back in those days, giants and titans used dwarves as slaves, and many of the dwarves alive today are actually descendants from those times. However, not all dwarves escaped. Those that couldn't were eventually transformed and corrupted into these fiery beings by their overlords that we now call Assers. Now, some eventually did escape that captivity after that and then formed their own societies in the plane of fire, while others are still imprisoned by fire giants to this day. So take that with a grain of salt, it's for the addition, it is what it is. Now, the leader of the Assers is their most powerful member, called Amaimon, but we also do not know anything about this creature. All we know is that Assers rule themselves individually on each colony, and even though they consider Amaimon to be sort of like the king of the Assers, Amaimon himself doesn't actually rule any of these compounds. Instead, he just inspects them every so often. It's funny though, in fact, all we actually know about this guy and his whereabouts is that all he does is explore the kingdom of the Asser tower by tower, community by community, and just inspects. He just goes from tower to tower inspecting. That's all he does and that's quite strange. But that's it guys, there really isn't much about the Assers. Again, it's one of those creatures that we don't really have a lot of lore for. Uh, to the point where the 5th edition entry in the Monster Manual is probably the best entry that we've had in all of Dungeons & Dragons for this group of creatures. Like, that's how much we don't have about the Assers. Um, but yeah, th thank you guys for being here anyways, even if the video was short. Um, this helps me out a bit because I, I needed to take a little bit of a break. So having a shorter video means I do have some time for myself um, to, to relax because I've been kind of overworking, overworking myself a little bit. So uh, I, I do appreciate the video being a little bit short. But yeah, other than that, I would like to also uh, thank very much my Patreon supporters. Barry Mascand, 5e Magic Shop, Morgan Johnson, Rusty Rain, Biotechnofrag, Doc Feeder, Brad Salazar, Walker Modley, The Great Codini, Terry Culp, Omega Scales, Ozol, Alex. Alex Cookson, Benjamin Bosters, Falky951, Chad Aga, Stephen, Ordoric, Prince Daylight Morning Crown, Sabim Kurshab, Solarensis, Thomas Hunt, Bushido Burrito, Nathan McComb, Soulless Rider, Werewoven Games, Roleplay with Advantage, Lost Crusader, Mr. Salty, Stalia, JD Green, Olav Klepp, Treb909, Tony Arcy, Famine52, George Fortland, Sovereign Mind, Trevor Hess, Draglogia5, Hustur, Zirin King, The Living Gilpack, Michael Walker, Streblo, Describe, and Herbert Johnson for supporting me on Patreon at the $25 level. If you would like to support me as well, then please, please head on over to patreon.com slash MrRex to support. Alright guys, thank you so much. Uh, we might do a video on salamanders, or we might just jump straight into the elemental plane of water. We'll see what we do. Uh, let me know actually in the comments if you guys want to just kind of just do the salamanders before we move on, or just move on. Either way is fine by me. But anyways, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.